in celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Sports on CBC, presented by the Championnat du Sport at Radio Canada, une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fender, Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Vera Burn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sports. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball. Le V 200 W, ballon officiel de U Sport. And by Mikasa, maker of volleyball's hottest star, the V 200 W, official volleyball of U Sports. Mark Hughes here, president of Canuck Stuff. And we've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. And we're pumped to be part of this year's U Sports National Championships.
It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. Welcome everyone to the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships presented by Mikasa here at the Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. My name is Everett DeLorme, joined by Ben Pozzotta here on this broadcast. And we are setting up quarterfinal number one between the Uni University of Alberta Golden Bears and Université de Laval, the Rouge et And Ben, this is one of the most storied rivalries in Canadian men's volleyball and U Sports Volleyball and we're in for a good one today. Yeah, Everett, this should be a fun matchup here uh, between Alberta and Laval. Um, we're just getting player introductions going here to get us started. Um, and we'll be starting the game shortly. Yeah, we should be, of course. Last night we had the U Sports Men's Awards Banquet, and Isaac Heslinga of the University of Alberta was named the U Sports Men's, player, Men's Volleyball Player of the Year. So congrats to Mr. Heslinga. It's well-deserved. There's little doubt in my mind that Isaac is probably the best player in Canada this year. Yeah, he's had a great season this year. He's really, uh, he's led his team in attack percentage and kills, um, and he's going to look to continue that this weekend and really give his team a chance to find that gold medal that they're looking for. Absolutely. We'll be right back with you guys right after the National Anthem. Mark Hughes here, president of Canuck Stuff. We've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. We're pumped to be part of this year's New Sports National Championships.
hit goal in celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats du Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre partenaire des prix de l'entraîneur de l'année U Sport. Veraburn, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sport. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball, le V200W, ballon officiel de U Sport. And by Mikasa, maker of volleyball's hottest star, the V200W, official volleyball of U Sports. Mark Hees here, president of Canuck Stuff. And we've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. And we're pumped to be part of this year's U Sports National Championships. And we are back now for the 2024 Men's Volleyball National Championships here at Queen's University. My name is Everett DeLorme, joined by Ben Plazota, and we are about to get underway here for quarterfinal number one between the University of Alberta Golden Bears and l'Université de Laval Rouge et Or. As we said on the top, Ben, this is one of the most, most storied rivalries in Canadian uh, U-Sports men's volleyball, two of the best programs in the nation for a long, long time. They will be matching up here in match number one. One big change here for l'Université de Laval is that they're all Canadian um, and one of their best players on the right side, Nicolas Fortin, is actually out for this match. He has been sick and he is on the sidelines wearing a mask. So in his place, you're going to have the first, play, uh, uh, first year, Terrell Tuassi, uh out of France getting the start on the right side as we are about to get underway here as Jonathan Girard gets us kicked off for, for Laval. It's going to go right to Heslinga. And, and we're going to be saying that name a lot this weekend, and, and especially in this game, Isaac Heslinga, player of the year, kicks us off with the first point. That's right, he's been doing that all year, Everett, and uh, like you said, we're going to see him do, continue to do that and push these Golden Bears through this match. And as Graydon Weeb, the fifth year, heads back to serve. And that's just going to be tipped, tipped over nicely, nicely handled by Espedito. And, and Heslinga, Heslinga again. again. Oh, oh, nicely handled by Nadal. And, and they're going to get their first chance offensively. And there we go. Out of the back row, Max Nozier from Ottawa throws that one down. Good job by Laval. Turning defense into offense there. Great dig off the, the block from Heslinga to turn that into a back row kill. Especially without Nicolas Fontaine today. That, 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 that needs, needs to be the bread and butter for Laval. They, they need, need their defense, defense to take over. They need to frustrate uh, uh, Alberta's high-powered high offense. And oh, and just like that, that once again, again capitalizing on those mistakes, a free ball error, and, and that's put away nicely down, down in the middle by Laval. Yeah, great swing by Adi out of the middle. And our first look here at Terrell Toissy. Out of France, was a member of their U19 national team. He's going to go outside to Heslinga, and he finds the back corner. That's also going to be a net violation on the foul. doesn't really matter as Heslinga nicely puts it into the back of the court. You can really see how high he can reach on his attack. They're able to get over top of the block and find the back corner. 
Yeah, yeah his reach and his, his window, window where, where he can hit the ball is, is, is so big. Oh, the dribbler! And that one falls for Alberta. Drybout Brow looked happy about that one. Just clipped the top of the tape and able to score a point for Alberta. Let's see if he can do this, this again. We actually saw Drybro at last year's national championships, except he was wearing the different jersey as, as a libero. Ooh, and that's going to be a great swing off the block and out of bounds there by Laval. Just couldn't quite turn that block in by Alberta. But Alberta is a big, big team. We were talking before the match started ever about their size. A lot of 6'7", six, 6'8 six, players here for Alberta. So look for, look for them to continue to put that big block up. Minvin now. Oh, and that one falls into the net. Alberta takes the 4-3 lead. Hesslinga now goes back to serve for the first time this season. Or, no, sorry, not for this season, but in this tournament. As Alberta leads 4-3. And that one finds the net. Looked like he tried to take a little bit off it there and just couldn't quite find the mark. The defense was set up deep in the back row for the serve receive for Laval. Esslinger with a heads-up play, but just couldn't find the court. You know what? If you're going to miss it, I want to see him take a chew. I want to I want to see him go for it, especially for the first serve in the gym. As we've got uh, Jonathan Adi now serving for Laval. We saw him get on the board offensively early, and Espedito gets blocked, but right back for Alberta. Sargent is going to be on the net there. Good call. And Laval now takes the lead 5-4. So far, we've seen a little bit of a sloppy play from Alberta in these early goings as they're trying to settle the nerves, and Laval's been able to take advantage of that. Yeah, just off the mark with a couple of those swings, having to tip the ball down, and we look for them to clean that up as we continue. That was a tough serve there by Adzi, and that's going to be out of system with Heslinga from the back row. Wow. I wasn't thinking he was going to be able to do anything with that. That was nowhere even near the attack line, but still maybe a little bit of a defensive effort needed there by Chuasi. And those are the plays that have turned him into the U Sports Player of the Year. 100%. Right, heads up, out of system, able to convert and score, score his team a point. Billy Johnson now, the flying Kiwi, and that one is going to be long, but we're going to be saying his name a lot. He is featured heavily in, in this Golden Bears offense. And now here is the setter for Laval to head back to serve, Charles St. Aubain. Funnily enough, he was actually supposed to go to Alberta. Oh, and that one it finds the net. We're all tied up at six and kind of ex what we expected early on here, Ben. Both teams just kind of feeling each other out. Yeah, maybe a little bit of nerves. First game of the national championship. Both teams with a few errors early. Yeah. Espedito now. Big lefty. Very nicely handled by Laval. And they're going to run that middle, but that set is just a little too low there for Jonathan Girard. And that one finds the net. That was a big serve from Espedito. Let's see if he can repeat that here. It was. I think if he's able to keep some serving pressure on, he's not the focal point of the offense like most right side hitters are. But if he can contribute quite a bit on the, on the baseline, that's going to be a big plus for Alberta as he drops another bomb down the seam. Espedito for the ace. Espedito also offering big height when he's in the front row. They're going to look to him to try and get some blocks. Uh, really set that outside against this, these Laval outside hitters. And that's going to see our first real lead here as Alberta increases it to 8-6. Espedito on a little run, and that's once again off the net for Laval. Now Chouassi, his first swing goes wide. And right there, you see Gino Brusso head to that second referee and call the timeout, as that is a three-serve run there by Espedito, giving that three-point lead to Alberta. Yeah, we're starting to see Alberta kind of settle into this game here. Um, a great service run right now by Espedito, Espedito sorry, to give them this three-point lead early in this first set of this quarterfinal matchup. Especially to that, some of Laval's points have come from, you know, misplayed balls from the Alberta side if they're really able to tighten things up on their own side to clean up their play clean up some of that that serve receive in the free ball situations that's going to start getting scary for Laval but there's one thing though you never count Laval out 
you, you, you never, ever, ever count Laval out. Um, they are known for just being pesky and staying alongside any team as they come out of that timeout. And of course, this is this is this is a big tr- this is a big moment for this Laval team without one of their big hitters, without Nicolas Fontaine. You got the first year Chouassi coming in. This is a, this is very much of a moment of truth for this Laval Rougeau team to see how they can respond. Yeah, good early timeout, settle down, settle down his team, and get them focused on what they can do. Because, like you said, they they are never out of any match. Espedito continues to serve, and another tough one, but good pass. Now Chouassi in system. Laval gets it back. Now to the middle, and Jonathan Forte is able to put that one down. Or sorry, Jonathan Gihar. Yeah, great swing by Girard out of the middle. Tough, quick approach. We didn't able to get his full approach, but two steps up and able to find the court. Or sorry, hands and then to the court. Good grindy play now as Lozier heads back to serve for the Rougeau. That's a big one. Nicely handled by Sargent. Now his sling out of the pipe off the block out of bounds. That's Linga. So red. Is that three kills already early on here? Yeah, three kills early for him. Two out of the back row already, and he's just moved into the front row. So yeah. Alberta's going to look to continue to find him. Jacob Sargent, another member of that Canadian National B team this summer. The ball's going to go outside. Dug by Espedito. Can Brodrabo track it down? He can. Dumped over. It's going to be out of system now for Laval. Chouassi on the right side. Oh, what a swing there by Chouassi. He did not have a lot of room on that back door, and he still found, found that back line. No, tough angle out of the back row. Great ball from their set, or libero, excuse me. And he able to turn and find that down the line. And that's, that's a really good sign for Laval because that's their bread and butter. If they're able to execute in a, in a situation like that where they make the dig, they're out of system and still score, that's a good sign for them moving forward. Oh, that one not, not so much of a good sign. I was just about to say it's really good uh, timeout management there by Gino Brusso, but kind of ruined there by Juha. Yeah, tough break. That's, a, that's two or three missed serves early in this first set for Laval. If they can look to clean up the service line, they're going to find a way to fi- dig their way out of this three-point hole. Not to mention they are on what I would deem the, earlier, the easier serving side with the full wall behind Alberta right now, and that's going to be the ace for Graydon Weeb down the line. Unable to handle it was Laval, and now that is a four-point spread for Alberta. Yeah, great float serve down the line, able to capitalize on that low, tough floating ball. Good there, block there by Alberta. Laval gets it back in the middle. Espedio is going to set this one out of system. Sargent's just going to dump it over. And once again, you see they're taking Saint Aubin, the setter. Out with their free balls, but now he's going to get it back. Outside, Minville, he's shut down. Santa Bay again to the pipe. Lozier off the block, and that's up. Now Alberta's chance for offense. Outside, Heslinga, he's going to roll it down. Stop the block. Dryborough just puts it up, and Billy Johnson showing his athleticism, just throwing up the meter ball. He goes up and puts it over his shoulder and down. Very unorthodox play by the middle right now. Kind of out of system. Setter had to put it to the high ball to the middle, and he's able to take advantage and score. That's just the beauty of this Golden Bears system. They're so, like, their base is so solid that it allows them to do creative stuff like that as Weeb continues to serve. Now it's going to right side to Chuasi. He goes off the block and out of bounds. And you know what? This, for Terrell Chuasi to have a big game here would be absolutely massive for, for this Laval squad. He is very untested. You know, and unlike most Laval players who come in with a, a few years of CCAA, uh, under their belt, you know, they've gone to other schools and they've gone to CCAA championships. Chouassi's coming in from France and is a true first year. Yeah, it's great to see him get off to a good start. Unfortunate miss serve there for him. Um, but to see the offense come for him early is great, especially, like you said, first year hasn't been in this big game position yet in his career. As now Drybro goes back to serve for Alberta and they've got a comfortable five point lead early in this match and Chouassi's going to get it on that C ball, just dump it over. And that's going to be run to Johnson. Maybe a little bit trying too much to force him there. As Johnson, he didn't really have an, uh, an approach to actually be going towards the other net. He was approaching towards the center and not towards the other side. Yeah, he didn't have the angle. And the D did a great job in the middle reading that angle of him coming in and sending that ball right back to the Alberta side. I almost wondered if that was like a miscued 33 to the inside. It's supposed, supposed to go to the outside. 
Espedito. One of first, his first, first real swings is out of bounds. Yeah, just a little low wide. Yeah, just a little. It's, I don't know why it's as tough for lefties to hit on the left side as righties hit on the right side. You know? One of those uh, volleyball mysteries. And now Heslinga. Ooh. He was looking for a touch. Brock. He's not going to get it, though. No yeah. touch call there by the referee or I, the, the lines officials. I, you know what? I don't. I don't. I think I'm with Andy Cameron on this one. I don't think I saw a touch on, on, on that swing, but that is a shot. That cross court, whether it's a 2-2 two to two or a 4-4, four to four, depending on what pin he's on, that's a shot that Heslinga has all day. And who? Billy Johnson. They're, they're really trying to force Billy Johnson down in the middle right now. He's really been trying to turn the ball back hard to the one on that uh, from the middle. And yeah. He's been blocked twice now and I think found the net another time. I mean, I, it, it, it makes sense there in, in, the, in that situation. You've gone to a few other options. hasn't really worked out. As Laval crawls their way back in this one. They were down by 5, 14-9. And can they make this play? They're still alive here. Can they tie things up? In the middle, Johnson. And that is out of bounds. We're all tied up at a five-point comeback there by Laval. Yeah, like we said earlier, you cannot count Laval out here, forcing the timeout by the Alberta Golden Bears. Midway through this first set, all tied at 14. There is something innate about RSEQ team's ability to dig deeper and, and to go to that extra level. Um, and that's why they're one of the, some of the most dangerous teams. And, I mean, this there's no doubt about it in my mind, Ben, that the RSEQ is the second best conference in, in Canada right now. If you see the quality coming out of it with teams like Laval, of course, Sherbrooke ranked number one. They've been undefeated all year. Um, Montreal, who we saw, saw at the national championship, have a really strong uh, tournament and finished fifth. Like, there is so much quality uh, in that RSEQ conference. They battle week in and week out. That's right. Laval coming into this tournament ranked the number seven seed, but they are no slouch. They lost to Sherbrooke in their conference championship. But looking at those best of three matchups, both both games went to five sets. Yeah. Just could have easily gone the other way, and we could have seen Laval here as a as a top seed. But and instead, they're the number seven, and Alberta has their work cut out for them. I mean, just to go into that even more, Laval was going to five in UNB in the RCQ semifinals as well, right? Just to show the parity throughout, throughout that conference. But of course, Alberta, the Canada West. the Canada West champions. Last year's national championship was a bit of a disappointment for them, coming in as the reigning champions and the reigning Canada West championships, finishing fourth, losing to McMaster in that bronze medal match. As now Heslinga is just going to tip that one over, and that's swatted back. Dryborough giving it as Heslinga again. Cool. And he just went over top on that one. He was head and shoulders above Lozier on that swing. Laval had a great block set up, but there's nothing you can do about no. athleticism. And Heslinga just going up, over top, back-to-back -back swings for him to find the court. You know, Heslinga last year at last year's championships, I found like he really struggled. And you had so many big names in last, last year's championships as he continues to serve. That one's just going to be a little bit long. Whereas this year, you know, all of those big names, the Elsers, the, the, the Coopers, the Canams, have all graduated. And I don't think there's anyone who can really play at his level this year. No, and, and like you said, the, the nerves of his first year, maybe last year being at a national championship, you see him a little more settled in this year. Yeah. As here is Adzi going back to serve. He's going to go at Sargent. Uh, right side, Espedito, the one-on-one -on -one block. And Luzier is looking mighty small on that left side right now for Laval. Awesome run by setter Sam Drybrow. Able to draw the offense, all, or sorry, the block all the way to the left side and send it back against the flow to his right side. Alberta holds that one-point lead, and there's Jonathan Zuhal running that fast middle option. You know, and that's what we're going to need to see from Laval, just spreading out that offense. They really need to be good down the middle of the court. They're not as physical as, as Alberta's middles, but they run that really fast first ball option. Yeah, speed's been, speed's been in their favor today. He's going to go outside now to Sargent. He's going to go through the block there. These Alberta outside hitters just swing so high on the court, able to take and find different angles that maybe the average outside player can't find. 
And it's nice to see that from Alberta early in this game. But just like we expected, this has been a battle so far as Espedito puts that one into the net. And that's a great sign. You can see Laval's bench going pretty hard for that one. Espedito went on a nice little run that really created that gap earlier in the set. Yeah, Laval happy to avoid another run from him. Now Lozier back to serve. And that one is just long. This is the Alberta bench kind of answering the excitement from Laval's bench there after that back-to-back -back miss serves. You know what, Ben? I'm really happy that in Canadian volleyball and U-sports volleyball in general, we've relaxed the bench rules. It wasn't that long ago that these guys would have been tweeted to stand beh back behind the bench. Ooh, and that is just going to be just wide there by Sargent. But let's let the boys on the bench have some fun, okay? Let's bring the, bring the atmosphere up a little bit. That's right. Sometimes it can be hard to stay engaged on the bench. Now, we're at a national championship, so everybody's excited hey. to be here. But yeah. it's a good way to keep everyone involved and feel like they're a part of the action, even if they're not one of those six or seven players on the court at each time. Yep. Jihal now back to serve. Just another player coming out of that legendary Titan de Nimalou program in the CCAA. Is, here's a chance for Laval to take the lead as we're all tied up at 18. That's going to go back now. <laughs> My goodness gracious, Isaac Heslinga. What was that? He just climbed the ladder and placed it exactly where he wanted to. Just continues to hit over the block. We've seen him consistently just reach higher than, the, than Laval has so far today. And they're going to have to find an answer defensively to, to combat Heslinga. You know what? It's one of those ones that he's he's probably going to, if, if you can slow him down one or two times or find other ways to make sure he doesn't get the ball, that's a win there. And I mean, even after that last swing, you look back as a uh, member of the coaching staff of the national team, Dan Lewis, is sitting back there. He'll be coaching professionally in France next year. He was just talking to some people about that high-level shot from Heslinga's. Tuasi is going to put that ball in now. Heslinga again, but that's dug by Lozier. Some mismanagement there from Laval in the backcourt, and they're just going to dump it over. That's a missed opportunity for Laval, but it's still alive. Another chance here, Chuasi from the back row. Oh, what a dig by Sergeant Drybo is just going to dump it over. Now St. Obey to the middle, stopped to slow down, but they got another shot. Now right side, Chuasi, sea ball. That's a great dig, still alive. Now a oh, little bit out of system here. Minville tipped it over, but Alberta doing such a good job keeping this ball alive time and time again. Their coverage is superb right now. Heslinga, but that's kept alive. What a rally we have here. Tuasi, no, ch no choice but to just dump it over. Here is the golden opportunity. Johnson wastes it, blows it out of bounds. He thought he put it off the hands. His face tells that story. But wow, what a point for Laval to take the, op the opportunity on. What a rally we just had so far. That's probably the best volleyball we've seen so far today with, with the back and forth, both teams making defensive plays and Laval ultimately coming away with that point. Both teams taking care of the details right now. You absolutely love to see it. Outside now, oh, Isaac Heslinga. And he knows, right? For the Bears to be successful, their first ball side-out offense needs to be on, on point. Whenever you start getting into these long rallies against a team like Laval, the longer the rally goes, the more it's in their favor. Dryborough now continues. We're all tied up at 20. That one's in the net. We're going to see that Laval bench stoked. You can see we know volleyball is a big game of momentum here. Right now, the, the energy is swinging Laval's way. Up one in this first set. Yeah. And if there's one team that I think knows how to run that momentum, it's that bad. But Johnson just tries to push that one through. Lozier now out of system. What a swing! Oh my goodness! Nice. Max Lozier. Wow, big cross court again. No approach. You just see him go up and want it more. And that was an out of system situation. Let's be clear on that. There, there was a bit of miscommunication. He didn't have a big head of steam. It wasn't a fast ball. He had three blockers in front of him, and he was still able to cut that inside with power. What a swing by Max Lozier. And we're all tied up, or no, sorry, we're not all tied up there. It's 22-20, and earlier in this set, when Laval was down 14-9, who would have thought they were able to come back? But they have been able to match 
Alberta's energy and just their consistency on every play. I think Alberta, though, they need to figure out what's going on in the middle. We haven't seen Weeb at all, and the connection with Johnson hasn't been there. No, yeah, the, we've seen a lot of errors from Alberta in the second half of this yep. set, both like you talked about in the middle, a couple out the side, thinking they went off hands, didn't go their way, but also on the service line. They, they've struggled in the second half of this set to find the court, putting multiple balls into the net or out the back. Um, so Alberta's going to look to side out here. Wouldn't be surprised if you see them go to Heslinga right away. Yeah, I mean, this side out on the right side. He is the very much the focal point of their offense. When you look at their overall stats um, from this season, 373 points. The next swap on this uh, team is Jacob Sargent with 220, 232. And right like just like that, just like you said, Ben, right back to Eslinga, and he just climbs that ladder. And it, it's almost, it looks easy for him. Like, it, does, it does. He looks calm and confident. He, he knows the ball's coming to him. Everybody in the gym knows the ball's going to him. I would say that's a 70% swing, too. Like, he's, he's not going balls to the wall right now. And I'm not saying that in a, in a bad way. I'm saying he's able to conserve his energy right now and that he's got much more in the, in the tank to go to. 100%. He's got so many shots in his arsenal that he's able to take some power off and find the open space yeah. in the court. Unfortunately, with the missed serve there, again, we yeah. see another service error from Alberta. It's those types of details that Alberta needs to clean up a little bit. Is that Z now? Serving. Laval with that two-point lead. In the pipe, that's dug well, but back to Alberta's side. And now they're going to go right side. Espedito, it's tipped, but Alberta still's got it. Now, Sargent, a little bit off the net, off the hands. Middle dig by Adzi, but once again, back to Alberta. Now to the pipe, Heslinga, and that one is going to catch the line. That is a sigh of relief there from Alberta fans. They're able to convert that one. That's right, a couple big swings by Heslinga out of the back row. Good digs defensively. Love to see uh, the middle for Laval getting a couple digs. That D yeah. is not often he's in the back row to play defense. A couple good digs keep that rally alive. Middle digs should be a stat of their own. They, they, they really they should. should. Ooh, and that's a tough break there. We've just <laughs> seen these timely service errors come yeah. from Alberta as well. In this it's first set, a big play, go their way, and then they go back and miss a serve on the line. You just see the energy deflate out of them. Especially, especially when you're getting served in for the serving stuff, right? You have one job to do. Right. You put the ball on the court, play a good defense. Minville. Or no, sorry, that was St. Aubain. That was a bomb of a serve. Just going to be dumped over. Big sh chance here on set point to SC. He's shut down! Jacob Sargent with his hands all over that one. And Alberta pulls in within, within one. It's still set point here for Laval. What a big block on the on the right side there for Sargent. Able to really penetrate the net and send that one back. This will be a very interesting answer here. Let's see if Laval can take this one left, nothing lead with Espedito on the line for Alberta. That is a good pass. St. Aubin to Lozier off the block, out of bounds. Laval takes that one. What a swing on the right side there by Lozier confident with that swing. They knew they were going to be set a great game this entire set and Laval takes it 25-23 to open up this uh, men's national U-Sport National Championship. Uh, some great volleyball and great grinding there by Laval in that first set. Coming down 14-9 to be able to come back and take that first set. Absolutely awesome. But if you're on the Golden Bear side of things, they need to clean up a few things. Too many errors, too many misters, too many missing pieces on the Golden Bears side of the ball. 100%. Look for them to clean up their errors in this second set. Um, again, only losing by two with a good lead, and uh, they'll bounce back here in the next one. We'll be right back with set number two. Exploitez mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by les championnats U Sport à Radio Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettler. 
Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Vera Byrne, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats du sport. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball, le V200W, ballon officiel de U-Sport. And by Mikasa, maker of volleyball's hottest star, the V200W, official volleyball of U-Sports. Parce que le sport, c'est aussi des parcours inspirants. Un regard unique sur l'humain derrière l'athlète. Exploiter mon potentiel maximum, c'est un truc de fou. Découvrez les récits numériques et vidéos de Podium sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. U Sports on CBC, presented by Les Championnats U Sport à Radio-Canada. Une présentation du gouvernement du Canada, the Government of Canada. Nike, just do it. Fettner. Fox 40, celebrating more than a decade of the Fox 40 U Sports Coach of the Year program. Pierre Partenaire des Prix de l'Entraîneur de l'Année U Sport. Vera Byrne, medical supply partner of Varsity Athletics since 1979. Partenaire du Sport Universitaire depuis 1979. Baron, exclusive supplier of U Sports Championship rings. Le fournisseur exclusif des bagues des championnats U Sport. Et par Mikasa, l'étoile menton du volleyball, le V200W, ballon officiel de U-Sport. And by Mikasa, maker of volleyball's hottest star, the V200W, official volleyball of U-Sports. Before, national championships at Queen's University. CBC Sports is the home of University Sports in Canada. Catch the best U Sports men's hockey teams as they face off in the 2024 University Cup live in Toronto. The action is underway on CBC. Thursday we have the UNB Reds taking on the Brock Badgers, followed by TMU taking on the Calgary Dinos. On Friday we will see... Without someone who's watching at home saying our, our levels are all over. I'm popping and he's too low. We're just about to get underway here in set number two as Laval took set number one, 25-23. Coming down from a 14-9 deficit as Graydon Weave is going to get us underway here in set number two. Right side of 2 SC, and what a swing from the first year. Laval picking up where they left off. That's right, and, and he is not looking like a first year today. He looks like he's been here before, swinging with confidence and just attacking that ball. As we mentioned, 2 SC, a member of the U19 French national team. Dryborough is going to go to Sargent out of the back row. We saw Heslinga really light it up in that first set. If Alberta can get Sargent going at the same clip or near the same clip as Heslinga, they're going to have a good time in the second set. That's right. That all opens up their offense so much with the focus on Heslinga when he's in the front row. If you can get Sargent going in the back, it's going to be a problem. Perfect pass there. Oh, and a miss cue. That is a wasted opportunity by Laval. What a beautiful pass by William Belgeron de Libero. And a very uncharacteristic miscue in the middle. Yeah, just couldn't quite find him there. Looked like they were trying to run a 31 and a 51 combined, and it didn't work out. <laughs> what a serve there by Drive for a low and flat. And that Z is going to go off the hands of Johnson out of bounds. Real important for this Laval team to keep this energy up. Two SC now back to serve. And that one is going to go a little bit long. Well, teams exchanging points here earlier in the second set after Laval took the opening one and scored 25-23. Eslinga, the player of the year. Out 
outside now in Minville. Drybro now to the pipe, right back to Heslinga. That's dug by Lozier. Now Truasi on the sea ball. What a swing! Drybro upset with it himself on that one, and I, I, I think that's a ball he can do a uh, dig. But still, great swing, swing there by Truasi. Yeah, Drybro just he, I think he's upset. He was just sitting a little bit too deep in that defensive set, and the ball landed just out of the reach of his arms. Yep. Minville the first year. With a beautiful serve there, but Heslinga out of the back row, easily handled by Balchon. Now outside, Max Lozier, recycled well. Once again, Lozier on the left side, three men in front of him. Oh, good pick up there by Heslinga. Cross court now, Sargent, that's a high ball. He swings away down the line, beautifully done by Jacob Sargent. Great defense turning into offense again for Alberta. What a dig by Heslinga out of the back row. He was actually out of the back of the court expecting a big swing cross court. He had to dive and pick that ball up. Very athletic play. Uh, Heslinga showing that why he's one of the brightest young stars in Canadian men's volleyball there on the defensive end now is Billy Johnson goes back to serve. Ooh, that one's way off for Laval. Golden opportunity for Alberta Espedito. Off the block and out of bounds. 5-3 Alberta. Great job by Alberta taking advantage of that free ball coming from Laval. Taking a two point lead here early in this second set. Also good for Espedito, not trying to do too much there. Seeing the opportunity, going for the waterfall, getting the point. Ho 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 ho! Max Lozier, man. He, he has just continued to pound the ball today. Looking to swing at 110, and it's paid off for him. That one, he is going, that is a well-formed block up there by Graydon Weeb and Espedito. He's going underneath that block, and just too much for Alberta to handle. Heslinga pass through to the net, and that's going to be another chance here for Laval. Can they tie it up here? Chuesi tips it over, dug by Espedito. Now Sargent, he's a little bit off the net. What a swing. Ooh. At Z, almost with another middle dig there. Jiha, unable to track it down. Sargent just too strong on the left side right now. Another out of system ball where we've seen these Alberta left side just go up and get it. I mean, he was named one of the top scorers in the Nasika Final Six earlier this year while playing for Team Canada. Or sorry, I guess it was last year now. Oh, and there's an error from Chuasi. And just like that first set, Laval starting to create that spread early on. Or sorry, That's Alberta. Right. That's right. You see them settle in. They've kind of cleaned up their errors early in this set from the first set. Let's look for them to continue to do this. Side now the Chuasi. Oh, great dig there by Heslinga. Now Drybro just going to dump that one over. Out of system now by Laval. Here's Lozi. Nicely blocked by Alberta. Their opportunity. Espedito. Oh, and that one is long. Tough break there by Alberta. We see Laval just continue to play defense on their side of the court. They're, they're a little outmatched in size here, but they're doing a good job playing defense, digging the ball, and giving themselves second chances. Laval's opportunities get better and better as the point goes on. It's these first ball situations where, once again, that's going to be a free ball over by Laval. Let's see if they convert, and they can do it all right away. But Alberta needs to clean up that first contact and that first ball side. Up. That's their best opportunity. They have, they're the better offensive team, they're the more physical team, but once they start getting into dirty ball situations, out of system situations, then we give the, the, uh, the advantage to Laval. That's right, Laval's just a pretty team. What a force there. Ooh, Driver trying to do everything he can to get Weed into this map. That is going to be out of bounds. We're all tied up at seven now, Ben. That's right, just like that, that three point lead that Alberta had. Laval has climbed back in and tied this game up. St. Alban with a big serve there, and that is going to be tight for Sargent. Ooh, Minvid was right there. 
Could have made the play, thought it was out, and that one just tacked the line. Yeah, Sergeant again just finding ways to score. That's a couple tight sets he's had, and he's done a good job to adjust and score a point for his team. Sergeant has really been turning things on here in this second set. Ooh, I almost thought that was an ace. Nicely got up there by Laval. Oh, no way. Looked a little bit indecisive there by Drybrow if he wanted to go with the one-hand set to the middle or dump, and unfortunately a little too late, he found himself on the net. I, I think Alberta thought that was an ace. I think they, they thought that ball was down because that seemed to surprise them as it came back. And as we even see Brock Davida kind of take a step towards the attack line. and He's been known to get a little testy with the referees sometime. I don't think he's anywhere close to that yet. Sergeant out of the back row. Belzolo gets his paws on it. Not to do, though. Alberta point nine. We've really seen Sergeant come on strong in this second set. Kind of leading the way for the offense here for the Golden Bears. Braden Weed, the community service award winner for the Canada West. We haven't seen him featured all that much in the offense as he puts that one out of bounds. No, it's been they've struggled to find Weeb on the offense so far today and really hasn't been able to convert on any block attempts. Zatanji Hall now back to serve for Laval. We're all tied up at nine. And it feels right now like no Alberta lead at six. Right? No. We've seen them create those spreads, and Laval is able to come back every single time. And that is a rare Heslinga ace. That needs to be the first one of the match. Yeah, we're really seeing a momentum shift happen right now. Uh, Laval takes a one point lead midway through this first set. Alberta looks a little bit down, while Laval looks to be rolling. Side now, Hislinga. He's not going to make two errors in a row. Not, not on a ball like that, not on a 101. No, no surprise that they go right back to their big gun after he makes an error, keep his confidence up, and let him keep swinging away. Sam Draubo back to serve. You know, he's a fantastic story for this Alberta team. Mentioned last year he was playing with Barrow. He came out of HNU as a setter, but he's a little bit undersized. And this year in practice, we decided to give him a chance, and he earned the starting spot. As no Z able to go through the block there, but still just amazing what you do. You just kind of bide your time. You just kind of I, I look, always let the coach staff, hey, if you ever need another setter, I'm there. You got a chance to practice, and here he is uh, starting at the national final. That's right. It's all about opportunities. Drybro now right side. Heslinga, that's going to be long out of bounds. Good close on the block by Jonathan I.D. Just unfortunately wasn't able to press in time, and out the back it goes. Linga just seems to have that ability to just float and just keeps, continues to rise. Schwesi out of the back row. That's going to be rolled. Kept up nicely by Sargent. Oh, my goodness, Jacob Sargent. Ben, you look astonished. Well, I, I'm just trying to take in what happened on the block there. Uh, Sergeant went up to block, and it looked like he almost used his shirt to pop the ball up. And I think you see the Laval coaching staff a little bit upset. Maybe it was his hand. Hard to see from our angle, but unique play nonetheless. Good pass there by Laval in system. And that's Z to put it down. And one thing I've been very impressed so far by this Laval and Vigil team is that when they have the opportunity to run the middle, they run the middle. And they're, they're hitting at a high clip right now, too. Yeah, there's been a clear advantage to the middle today in Laval's favor. Alberta should look to maybe tighten that up a little bit, double block, help each other out. Which is funny because I, leading into this game, I would have guaranteed that Alberta would have the advantage in the middle. But so far, it hasn't been the case. Heslinga, oh sorry, that was Sargent just dumping that one over. Another free ball situation here for Alberta. Ah, uh, the pipe, Heslinga, oh my goodness. I got excited as that set was being made because you could see it happening with Heslinga coming out of the back row. It's, it's incredible how fast they run that back row attack to Heslinga. It almost is the same timing as the middle quick blocker. That middle has to get his hand down out of the way in order to Heslinga swing. It's 
Johnson to serve. And Laval standing up real high in servicing on that. And Lozier continues to be unmatched right now on that cross court swing. Yeah, again, and, and like you said, it's been cross court all day long. He's found scenes in the block or found ways to get around or underneath, and he's scored consistently. He's able to go sharp cross and sharper cross. As he now. Serving for the Hoosier. Taking a moment. Settling things down, and he serves that float serve so low. Just going to be dumped over, and now Chuasi. Oh, he's looking for hands, trying to go down the line. And head coach Gino Busso not happy about something. He's looking for Tsuasi to really try to challenge that block. Not try to go away for it, really try to challenge that block. Let's see him put some pressure on it with his swing. That's right, he's tried to make a few shots the last few times out of the back row, and coach is looking for him to take that big swing he has. He had so much success in the first set being aggressive. He needs to continue to stay aggressive. Just continue with what was working for him. That's Espedito with a missed serve. We, we've seen less of those this set for the Alberta Bears, but again, Laval's got some momentum. They're rolling, and they're able to counter those the lack of errors for by Alberta. It'll be interesting to see once we can get some stats about what, what things are looking right now. Oh, and a wonderful swing by Heslinga out of the back row. One was all Heslinga, set two has been all Jacob Sargent. Would love to see a little bit of variety from this Golden Bears offense, but at the same time, you do got to go with what work is working for you. Unable to track it down is Santo Bay, and that's an ace by Sargent. Sargent has continued to have been the driving force in this second set for Alberta, forcing Laval to take their first time out of this set. Absolutely, just a slight lead change there as Alberta takes it. 15-14, forcing to Albert, or Laval to call that timeout. And to me, there's nothing wrong with what Laval's doing on their side of the court. This is just to ice the server. Right? Uh -huh. You know the quality of Jacob Sargent on that back line. You just you want to give your, your team a chance to take a breath, take a breather. You know you're a good second half of the set team. Ice Jacob Sargent. Let's go back to it after it. That's right, yeah. Midway through, a good time for a timeout. You can see Alberta kind of gaining their first momentum of this set since they had a three-point lead early on. Um, so good time out by Laval to kind of, like you said, settle down, make Char Sergeant think about this serve a little bit more and see if we can force him into a miss. Yeah. And if you're on Sergeant's side of the ball, you just want to sit back in six and drop a ball, I would say. That's right. I don't even know if you need a serving assignment. Just put the ball in with pace, something over 75%. That's right. I mean, he has so much force and pace behind his serve naturally, it's hard for anybody to handle. So, like you said, find the middle of the court and... He'll be okay. Coming back from this timeout, Laval ready to go. Sergeant grabbing that ball back to serve. Oh, he puts it in with force, but nicely handled by Belgian Hall. What an answer from both teams. Great offense. Gino Brusso can only clap and nod his head in, in enjoyment. Wonderfully executed first ball side out there by Laval. That's right. Sargent did exactly what he wanted to do, and Laval did exactly what they wanted to do, and it went the Laval way. And he you. you know, you haven't really seen him too much from the baseline yet, but you can know he can put on some pressure. It's another good one. In system, though, no, there we go. Great and weed. And look at how stoked the entire Alberta team comes to the sideline to clap on their fourth-year senior as they finally get him going down the middle. And you know how much of an important leader he is on that team and just by the reaction of the rest of the, rest of the boys. That's right. It's great to see him finally get going in the middle, able to find him for the big kill. Nicely handled by Lozzi. Oh, good run. Can it catch me alive? No. And a very nice run there by Charles Santo Bang. Just over his right shoulder to Jonathan Girard. We're seeing a bit of a battle through the middle here in this late in this second set. And once again, like, if you had told me that we would have a middle battle in the way that we, we do, I, I I wouldn't have believed that. But Laval's middles have really turned up so far. 
Driver oh, right side, Espedito. Oh, what a swing there by Espedito. We haven't heard much from him this set, but that's a great job. Liam Espedito out of Portland Quitman. And like you said, if they can get all their offensive guns going, they're a hard team to stop. So it's great to see him get going in this third set, or second set, sorry. Just about to praise uh, Driver O for his ability to spread that offense. Puts it into the net. Now, now Chuesi, he has cooled down quite a bit here in this second set. Right side to Hislinga. Ooh, and he thought that one caught the hands. And no touch given, and we're going to be all tied up at 18. Oh, just narrowly missed at the side there, and Alberta's forced to call a timeout here, all tied up at 18 in this second set. Again, we saw Laval call our previous timeout where the momentum was going Alberta's way, and kind of vice versa here, where Laval is then taking that momentum, and Alberta's looking to slow them down a little bit. I'm, I, you know what? I, it feels a little quick on the trigger team. It feels like, you know, I would have liked to see them. It's, it's just tied, you know. Maybe settle things out, but maybe you know you're already down by one set. You don't want to take any hit. You want to take any chances. You still have. Oh no, that is their second timeout. They've already taken a timeout. Have they? Yeah, it must be. There's zero timeouts on the board there. Yeah. So, like that's like. Oh, no, I think that's uh, that's just their first. Thing. Oh yeah. What's the score? Oh yeah, no timeouts left. I'm, yeah. I just can't read the board properly. But you see Albert already back out on the court again, like you yeah. said. Maybe it maybe it was a little early, but maybe it's what they, they needed. Just a quick, hey guys, reset. Let's continue to do what we've done yeah. or well today and get ourselves back on track. There, there may be something tactical too that they're spotting that they want to change right away, that they want to change for this rotation here. As Chuesi goes back to serve, 18 all. Navad took the first set 25-23 after being down 14-9. Handled right side Heslinga. Oh, and he's just gonna drop that one into the back row. And you can see Gino Busso on the sideline there from Laval. A little bit animated as that that off-speed stuff is usually Laval friend fight. That's yeah. usually where they get their conversions. Yeah, great change up by Heslinga there. So it was a little bit off the net and he had to adjust, but he's able to find the open court. Well, he's on the baseline. Ops for the floater this time. A bit of a hybrid as Chuasi. He's aggressive and it works for him. Belgian was right there to spot that one out. What a, what a great read by the Laval Libero, tracking that ball the whole way and just at the last second, leaving it so it drops out of bounds. You know, I've, I've been a big fan of the other Libero on this Laval team because I've been for a long time. So the fact that even Belgian was able to be above uh, Doucette, just a, a testament to how good he is at home. That one was a net violation, but Belgian Hall tracked that one down. That was a fantastic dig. I'll, I'll say it right here. I think the net violation is the worst call in volleyball. Like that, the, them touching the net had no bearing on play whatsoever. It's always a tough, a tough call to take, especially in a tight game like this. Yeah. With Alberta up one here. Johnson going at Mindin. That's a fastball to Chuasi. Oh, he did not have. He had not many options on that. It was no. swing or swing hard, you know. No. Hey, if you're Laval, you're happy to see him finally take a big swing out of the right side. It's unfortunate he was matched up against six foot seven and six foot seven yeah. uh, to block. Saint Bang needs to give that one a little bit more off the net and just a touch higher. Great pass there by Min Gil. and they're going to run that D out of the middle, and that is going to be out of bounds. Alberta. Putting their foot on the gas here, 22-19. Laval is going to be forced to call their second timeout. A yeah, rare miss by Adi out of the middle there. He's had a great game so far. Look for him to shake that one off and get himself back on track. But a good timeout here by Laval down. Three kind of forced to have to take their second timeout. Looking to crawl their way back in and take some momentum away from Alberta. And this is if you're Alberta and if you're head coach Brock Davida, you're getting in there and you're like, hey, we, we put our foot on the gas. We put our foot on their throats and we're going to finish this one right now. Because if you leave that door open a millimeter for this, this Laval team, they're going to find a way to pull away. 
That's right, we've seen Laval crawl back at a three, four, five point deficits so far in these first two sets. So let's not be shocked if they are able to find a way to get back into this one. And like you said, Alberta's going to look to put them away here, only needing three points to take the second set and even things up. I'd see is going to be the next one to serve for Laval. This floater has caused Alberta some problems here. So if they can get out of this first ball situation, as Billy Johnson is heads back to serve for the Golden Bears, if they can, this, the importance of siding out this ball is, is paramount. If you don't side out right here, you might as well just start that fourth set. Third set. A hundred percent. Let's see what Laval can do. You know, well, kind of, kind of let off let off the hook there, but you know that's a huge sigh of relief. Yep. We'll have to chalk that one up to the Laval coaching staff. Give them credit on the stat sheet for yeah. that. Let's give one to Gino Brusso on that one. Right in the pocket. As that D now back to serve. Starts on the outside of the court and cutting in. He's going to go five to five. Oh, and a big block there by Jonathan Zuhal. And just like we said, Man Laval just manufacturing their own momentum. That's right. And again, the Laval middle stepping up big when Laval needs a point. We've seen it all night long with the offense in there with the big defensive block. That middle battle has been all Laval all afternoon long. And that Z now back to serve. And Laval only trails by one now. Oh, and that one was a tough one. You want to put that ball in in that situation as you can feel the sigh of relief and look at that Alberta bench. That's right, and Espadito back to back to serve here. Let's see if he can unload on one of his big spin serves. Yeah, we saw it in that first set. Let's see if he can do it here again. Nope. Trading missed serves. Yeah, we, put, we put the pressure on it. That's, that's what happened. That's right. It's the commentator. commentator's first now as Santo Bang goes to the back row. This is a perfect opportunity for that. This is the rotation that you want with Lozier and Tressi in the front row. you got Santo Bang on the baseline. He's got a good serve too. And another good one. Driver outside. Sargent puts it away. And the confidence that Sargent walks back to the service line with is unmatched right now. You've seen him just continue to put this team on his back in the second set. And let's see if he can take this second set up one match or set point sorry for Alberta. Set point let's see if they can level things up. Jacob Sargent back to serve into the net. This serves have kind of been the story here of these last six or so points for in this second set back and forth with those missed serves. Let's see if Laval can clean it up. Oh, what happened there? It's almost like he forgot to jump. And Heslinga off the block, out of bounds. And not entirely sure what happened on Max Lozier's serve there. If there's one player for the Val who had one be at the baseline there, it was him. Popped it over. Yeah, he did a good job. Even if the toss was a little off or the footing was a little off, getting that ball bounce to give his team a chance is just tough with Heslinga on the left side just going up and over top, off the block and out. And uh, Queens, or sorry, uh, Alberta evens this one up, 1-1 one, one here, taking that set 25-23. Look, look it up at that scoreboard, the home team is Queens. You're right, it, it's, it's almost like we're calling a, uh, a Queens game, but a great job there from Alberta to get a few things going, and we will be back for set number three of the 2024 Men's Volleyball U Sports National Championships live from Queens University. analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur de l'univers complexe et en mutation. incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Mark Hees here, president of Canuck Stuff. And we've been standing behind our overkill clothing and supporting athletes for over 30 years. We're pumped to be part of this year's New Sports National Championships. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. 
aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur d'un univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. every hit, goal, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Parce que le sport, c'est bien plus que des résultats. C'est aussi des analyses et des dossiers qui nous plongent au cœur d'un univers complexe et en mutation. C'est vraiment incroyable. Suivez les actualités sportives sur RadioCanada.ca et sur l'appli Info. Welcome back to the Athletic and Recreation Center here at Queen's University for the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships. We are all tied up here at one set apiece. Everett Delorme here joined by Ben Pozzotta. First set went to Laval, second set went to Alberta. Ben, what do we what are we thinking here for set number three? Flip a coin. We've seen the first set go 25-23 and the second set go 25-23. So we've wow. got two evenly matched teams here. Uh, Alberta going to look to continue to build momentum off their second set win and Laval going to look to bounce back. Both teams were strong. Uh, Alberta was kind of led by um, Jacob Sargent there in the second set uh, with with their uh, big left of Isaac Helsinga, uh, Helsinga, sorry, coming on strong late. So we actually start this set with a time delay warning or a yellow card for the head coach of the Golden Bears, Brock Davida, for taking a little too long. But Jacob Sargent picking up where he left off with a big kill. I mean, he got that big kill to give them up set point 24-22 in that last set. He's continuing trucking. That's right. He's back to serve now. Let's see if he can find the court with his big spin serve. Oh, that one is a bit of a phaser, a bit of a flat one as it goes way out of bounds. And that is a big sigh of relief if you are Laval. And now Chouassi. Let's see if he can get things going here again. He was real hot in the first, cooled off in the second. If he can get things going again, Laval. Oh, but Drybaro getting in on the offense. He's saying undersized. He doesn't care. What a heads-up play by Dryborough there to turn, keep both hands up high to kind of disguise that dump and turn and find the middle of the court. Love watching the boys, of course, some fantastic setters. Some of the best setters of all time ever come to Canada coming out of this Golden Bears program. Here's the last two. Max Elgert currently setting in the CEV Cup Finals for Loomberg as Johnson and Heslinga shuts the door in a big way for Alberta. They're going to take this 3-1 lead. As I was saying, like some fantastic setters of this Alberta program. You look at the last two, Max Elger, Brett Walsh. It's been some, some damn good com company for uh, Sam Drabaro to be in. Ooh, that one's just a little bit long from Braden Weed. Laval with their second leg, both on miss serves from Alberta to start this set. If, again, we, we saw this early. It's early in the first with the miss serves from Alberta. See if they can clean that up. Minvid has been quiet offensively tonight as Heslinga gets it outside. Nicely dug by Chouassi. Out of system now, Lozier. Takes a little bit off of it, recycles that one. Now Chouassi off the block, dug. Now the opportunity for Alberta. Outside, Heslinga, one-on-one, -on -one, cross court, it's done. Big cross court swing from Heslinga there. He's doing a good job, that hard, hard angle he's able to take. Able to find that court. His ability to 
position his body in the air to be able to hit that cross-court shot is, is pretty incredible. That is a high-level shot. And that is out of bounds. You know, it's interesting. It's, there's, there's one thing about U-Sport men's volleyball is that when you are watching this, you know that players are going on to the highest levels of volleyball after this. So for me, you know, I see uh, Italian super agent Leo Capaldi in the stands, and I know he's watching Isaac Heslinga. And I, I wonder where he's going next year as Renata Diaz shut the do down in the middle. Billy Johnson all over that one. Alberta putting their foot on the gas here. 6-2 to start this third set. And there is a timeout early from Laval in this third set, down 6-2. We're seeing Alberta come on strong with their blocking. That's one area we haven't seen them done do a whole lot in these first two sets, but in this third set, they've already got two big stuff blocks and their hands on a whole lot of other th swings by Laval. You don't like, there's, there's, there's two contrasting styles here when you see Marco Canada West volleyball compared to RSQ volleyball. You know, and that's a few, it's, it's, you just don't have the physicality, right? You, ben, you were talking about it earlier, just if you look at the heights of both these teams, it looks like there's a big mismatch. So the level that they play at is different. Laval plays real tight to the net, they play real, real close to the net, they don't play that high off that top tape. And so they, they like going underneath, so that's why Laval's first tempo middles have worked such so well for them in the first two sets. They're there, they're on time, and Alberta's going up high and trying to play with them up high, and Nevada's just going underneath. That's right. Quite a matchup we have here. A little bit of strategy back and forth, and let's see if Alberta can continue to push out of this timeout. Driver will continues to serve. Lozier. Oh, it's kept alive there by Balhom. Minville tracks it down, and yeah, that is that is the, the right call off the head of Rosier, Belgian home, Minville. Four touches for Laval. And again, that big Alberta block coming up big on the left side, making it hard for Rosier to find the court. You know what, so far this match has been so tight. But earlier on in this that first set, Laval was down 14-9, and they were able to come back. This, this feels a little different. And you're, you're really seeing Billy Johnstone come on strong a little, closing those blocks on the pins and sending that ball back in to the Laval court. And now we're seeing that substitution for the Bougeral coming in in place of Jonathan Adzi is going to be number six, Felix Tufoul. Coming out of Edmonton, actually. So, you know, this is his hometown team. Oh, the touch there in St. Aubain. Does such a good job to keep that ball alive. Heads up play by St. Aubain to take advantage of the kind of drifting block there of Alberta. Now, number six, Felix Tufoul. Great to see out of Nate, the Northern, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, who just won the CCAA last weekend. First ever in their history, but oh my goodness, Billy Johnson are right on cue. Right, if you're Alberta, that's exactly what you want to see out of Johnson. He started to pick it up here in this third set with his blocking and then adding in the offensive piece as well. Heslinga now back at the baseline. Oh, and you know what? His He's been going for a, a hybrid today, and it just really has, it hasn't been working for him. He has yet to really find his serve. No, and, and you can see the frustration on him there back on that service line. Let's see if he can side out here with the pass and get his team back this point. Nicely handled there by Sargent. He's going to go right side to Espedito. He has to check himself a little bit. Minville tosses it up for Lozier. Just going to chip it over. Oh, my goodness, what happened there? And you could see the entire Alberta bench jumped up. No block, no movement on defense. Just a, a rare miscue for the Golden Bears. Yeah, a little bit of a miscommunication there by Alberta with the front row not going up and the back row setting up as if they were. St. Aubin continues to serve as Laval tries to crawl their way back into this third set. But not if Jacob Sargent has anything to say about it. My goodness. What a cross-court shot we've seen. As Linga do that earlier, now Sargent also with that sharp, sharp cross-court swing 
with authority. And right after that play, Gino Busso grabs QSC and says, hey, that's his shot, that's his cross court. We want to take it, that away on him. Good pass there by Bowser Home. St. Aubin in the middle. Outside the Choisy. That's blocked. Kept alive though. Lozier. Oh my goodness. He, he got it done. Now Sargent chipped it over. That's Doug in the back row. Dumped over. Now out of the pipe. Heslinga. 11-5 here. And that was a big opportunity. Points like that generate momentum for Laval. What a way for the Golden Bears to shut the door. That's right, and they just continue to roll here in this third set. Up six, 11 to five right now, all tied up 1-1 in sets. Johnson's floater moves quite a bit. Lozier cuts inside so well. His thumb down shot is fantastic. Yeah, and we, we haven't seen it a lot today. He's been just a bit of a powerhouse, powering through blocks, finding ways underneath. But nice to see him change it up and show that he is a versatile player, not just one dimensional. Now back at the baseline, of course, he ended that last set. A bit of a miscue. Oh, and that was a bomb. Nicely handled, though, and Jacob Sarge is going to get off. Lozi was right there, and you can see that adjustment in the Laval defense. They're going to let make him swing line, but they're also going to move that six-sack player to to cover that, that line hit. Lozi was right there. He was right on top of it. That's right. Good adjustment. Let's see if they can uh, take advantage of that six being down the line. Espedito. Nicely handled there by Lozi in system. Oh! What happened there? It looks like that ball floated a little bit more and it kind of landed behind St. Aubin. Oh, it was caught up and just a bit of ugliness there from Nevada at the worst time. You have 13 sets. Yeah, a bit of congestion here. You have this serve receive rotation with the right side, the middle, and the setter all up the front of the court. Escudito continues the pressure on now. And Chuasi has to check himself there. That set off from St. Aubin. And now you're going to see the timeout being called from Gino Busso as that lead. And just, that's the biggest lead we've seen so far, man. 14 to 6, 8 point gap here for Alberta. That's right. You're really seeing Alberta roll right now, forcing Laval to use their second and final timeout of this third set. You see everything going the Golden Bears' way right now, and they really started off and continue to show their size and their ability to block the offense coming from Laval. If, if you're a Golden Bears fan right now, you're glad to see them set in this. Because everyone remembers what happened last year. Even in that, that first match uh, against Windsor, they really struggled through it. If it wasn't a, uh, it was, if it wasn't for a fantastic performance from uh, sorry, I'm blanking right now. It was if it wasn't for a fantastic performance from Jordan Cannon, they wouldn't have made it through and then they got thumped by Sherbrooke in that semifinal and then just didn't even show up for the bronze medal match as well. So it's good to see if you're an Alberta fan, it's good to see them settle into this game and find Alberta Golden Bears ball. That's right, and you know they're here for with with one color on their mind, and one that's color. gold, yeah, right? Absolutely. So to see them kind of settle in and find their game. Like you said, if you're a Golden Bears fan, this is probably what you're used to seeing all year long, is them run their steady offense, contributors all around, and then with this eight-point lead here in this third set. is going to kick us off here once again. Nicely handled there by Minville. That one-handed set, can they keep live? They can! Oh, my goodness! Oh, it's just out of bounds! Oh, that would have been fantastic. What a play there. Didn't go quite go the Golden Bears way, but again, that's going to keep momentum. You're seeing guys make plays that are unorthodox, and those are the kind of plays that can change a game. Absolutely. And I mean, Alberta doesn't really need the game change right now. They've, they've got everything going in their favor. Mishiha heads back to serve. Handled by Heslinga. Outside the sergeant. He's just going to tip it down. That ball's nice and quick to the outside. He's able to make it work. Sergeant so good with that tight ball on the left side, able to maneuver it and find that open pit on the Laval side. Sergeant has been probably the Bears' best server today. Not on that one, though, as it goes well out of bounds. Oh, it looked like it floated a little bit on him there at the end. It's been aggressive, though. We've seen some of the other Alberta players lighten up on their serve. He's been one that's really swung away all game long. 
Rossi. Nicely handled by Edwards. Oh, it's thrown down, but kept alive, Alberta. Now it's going to be right side. Espedito. Oh. Suasi, no one home. Espedito did get away with a center court violation on that one, but he won't tell the referees. Tough play there for Laval. They had nobody home on the block and unfortunately tried to go down the line and just out the side. That's, that's a massive play, not only for the context of this set, but if you're Laval and you can generate that point, maybe build a bit of momentum. Maybe it doesn't help you for this set, but maybe it helps you in the fourth. There we go, as you see Ad and Ad is getting those boys because Laval have lost all momentum right now. And this is a team that thrives off momentum. That's their that's their bread and butter, that's their beads on toast, what they have for breakfast. So they're going out hungry out there. It's, it's not looking good. Great pass there. Espedito on the right side, dug by Chuesi and kept alive. Back on the upper side of things. Opposite to Eslinga. Oh my goodness. Off speed over top. That was always there, but couldn't handle it. There's not, not much you can do with a shot like that. Has Linga just shown why he was the U Sports Player of the Year this year for the men's volleyball? I'm sure there's quite a few teams around the, around the world who are watching this right now. Very interested in Isaac Hislinga. Oh, it's St. Aubain. And the passing has just been so tight. We've seen him, especially in this third set, Ben. He's been right on the net. He's been right on the tape. He's had to do one-hand stuff. He's trying to save balls. That first contact really letting Laval down right now. And that's that should be their team by then. That's right. That's twice now that he's really had to reach behind him and unfortunately couldn't control first pass. And as you're seeing it. Number five come in, Miguel Zinets. Out of Ottawa. Ooh, that was a real close one there. Maybe that was a bit of a strategic substitution by the Laval coach. Out of timeouts, but wanting to slow down momentum, just give that Alberta server a little extra time to think about it back there on the line. Not to mention, like, A, you're giving some of the younger guys, you know, a bit of experience over here in the National Championship. But, hey, like, you still have a fourth set to play. Like, you can you can almost give this one up. Rest your guys. Let the bench guys maybe manufacture a little bit of momentum and then get going again for set number four. What a swing by, like, it's Linga there, able to kind of contort his body sideways on the right side and find the middle of the court. Ben, we're on, we're on the sidelines. And Hesling is facing up us when he's approaching that ball and still has the ability to get thumb down around it. As I said earlier, his ability to comport himself in the air is otherworldly. That was a good serve by Heslinga, first one of the day, but handled by Laval. Lozier dug by Edwards. Now here's Sargent. Had to take a stu stutter step. What a swing, Jacob Sargent. Belgium has been fantastic all, there, all day. It was there, but un unable to bring it up. You really see the advantage of having height on your team with those off, off the net balls. They will just go climb the ladder and still get a full swing away. Yeah, really good to see the attention to detail right now for Alberta. You're up by 10, but you're, you're not losing focus at all. That one's an off speed from Heslinga. Outside now to Lozier, he loads up, but that's slowed down. Now here to the pipe, Heslinga! Oh, and a rare error off the tape, out of bounds. And a little bit of life here in this Alberta side, but they've got a long way to go, trailing by nine. Yeah, if you're Laval, you really want to try and build some momentum going into this fourth set. Again, if you we've seen them come back at a game. Nine is a big number, but they are never out of it. St. Bank taking a good shoe. That's going to go to Espedito, and that one is long. Little by little. And once again, this isn't like, this isn't for this set here, Right, I've had a few errors and, and Albert is able to take this one, right? This, this isn't an Albert because he's just not going to be able to side out. But this momentum building is so crucial for Laval as they gear up for the next set. Tough one there by St. Aubain. Alberta now up 21-12 in this third set. 1-1 one, one overall. We saw the first two sets be both 25-23 matches. This one a little bit more lopsided. Lozier handles that one nicely in the middle, and he's shut down. Great and weed. And set three, the middle battle has all been about Alberta. 
Graydon Weed, the Golden Bear captain, really coming up big in this set. Nice to see him come alive defensively and with his offense. Couple of big points here in this third set. Johnson is back to serve, 22-12. Big gap here for Alberta. Nozia is gonna get it back on the right side. That's slowed down. And Heslinga out of the back row, and it's so interesting how available he is. And Brock Davidock is, is going is, is going to talk to the down referee to mention. There's been a few missed under net violations. But I said earlier, the net violation is one of the worst calls in volleyball, but the under net violation is one of the most important for, for safety. So I'd really like the down referee to maybe catch on that a little bit better. Rosie now from the baseline, another big serve, nicely handled by Sargent. Weeb just tipped it over. And he's getting going a little bit. Now Berta's middle is starting to get hot. And that's dangerous for every other team in this tournament. That's right. That's just a veteran play right there. Weeb, the fourth-year student at Alberta, just a heads-up play, able to turn and find the open court on that tip. Escudito, nicely handled by Belgian. Right side here. Oh, and Metz! What a swing for the first year out of Ottawa. His first ball is a beauty down the line. Yeah, big play for the first year. Tough coming into a game cold like that. Third set, but shows that he can play on this court. Sorry, I apologize. Zmetz is actually a second year coming out of uh, Ottawa. The Ottawa Mavericks Volleyball Club. Big shout out to Terry and everyone else over there up in Ottawa. Outside now to Sargent. Zmetz unable to shut the door there. You know, it's a tough situation for Laval to be in right now. You have Nikita Fultain, one of your best players. Sideline with sickness in your national quarterfinal. Set point here for the Golden Bears. Sargent, what a serve. Now Minbin for a rare swing for him. Oh, and he finds the line. What a swing there from Minbin. And you know what? Time and time again, if you go back to the 2012 National Championships in this very gym, last time Queens hosted, Laval made it to the final then off of Carl de Grand Prix, but Frédéric Mondou played an entire semifinal match against Manitoba where he had no kills and Laval was still able to win. It's a, just a classic RSEQ team with that P2 who's real good defensively. But my goodness, Isaac Isenga, what a treat is it to watch him right now. He's something else. Great swing there to take that third set. Alberta by a score of 25-15 here in Kingston, Ontario. That was an emphatic set win there by the Golden Bears. They take this U Sport men's volleyball quarterfinal up two to one now. And they will look to take it home in the fourth set. My name is Everett Horn, joined by Ben Lozota. We will be back shortly with set number four. fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. Hit goal and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. 
We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage. ISI Live, be there. Welcome to the 2024 U-Sport Men's Volleyball Championships presented by Mikasa on CBC Sports. My name is Everett Lorm alongside Ben Plazota. And Ben, it was all Alberta in that third set and utter domination, 25-15. You know what, after those first two sets were neck and neck, 25-23, either way, Alberta just blew this game wide open. It's going to be very interesting to see how Laval can respond after that. Yeah, we really saw Alberta take control of this match in the third set, um, eliminating their errors. That was a big, big thing for them in the first two sets. Lots of first service errors, a few hitting errors, but they cleaned that up big time in the third and were able to take the third set by a score of 25-15 over Laval and kind of carry momentum through that set too, which we know is huge in a volleyball match. So Laval looking to maybe take this break and play, reset the score 0-0 and try and build some momentum well, Alberta's going to look to try and keep control of that momentum here in the fourth. Alberta, of course, the winningest program of all time in U Sports men's volleyball history. About to get us underway as Sargent with another big serve there. That's going to be Nozini out of the middle, but Alberta's block picks up where it left off. I gotta stop saying that. It's our third set in a row. I've, I've started that. Uh, with, uh, I, gotta, I gotta switch things up here, Ben. That's all right, but a big, big block by Alberta there out of the back row. Sargent has really found his serving form right now, and he's on the good serving side as well, too, and he's a rare miss cue for Navad, and that's going to be a free ball sent over. Chance here for Drybauer. Outside, has Slinga. Nice dig there by Santo Bank. Track down here, Nozier just going to dump it over. Free ball situation once again for Alberta. And another dig. Can they keep it alive? No, they can't. One touch, two touch, three touch can't do it. Laval, though, good read on the over-the-top swing by Heslinga there. But we were able to get a hand on it and try and keep that ball alive. Unfortunately, just couldn't control it off the second touch. Heslinga not bringing a huge amount of pace on those swings right now. And really what keeping Laval in it. Sargent continues to serve. Nicely handled there by Lozier, there in system. Right side, Chouassi. He goes over top. Can they track it down? Yes, they can, but they can't get it over. Edwards was right there, and I almost wondered if Espedito got in his way a little bit. Yeah, it looked like there was a bit of hesitation by both players, both yeah. going for the ball. You always love to see that as a coach, but maybe Esposito with his length might have been a better person to go after that ball. No, I want to see my lip go for that. I want to, <laughs> I want to see my lip on that second ball as, as soon as it touches the first player. It all puts it in. Dryborough to the middle. Weeb. And you know what? Just keeping things simple. He didn't even approach that one. He's like, I'm bigger than you. I'm taller than you. I'm just going to go up. Short arm. Put that one down. Next point. Let's go. Go back to serve. You see him walk back with that smile on his face, knowing that he's just playing smart volleyball right now and taking what the defense gives him. Weeb. Ooh. Takes a chew on it. That's don't really see him use that hybrid spinner much. You usually see him on that float serve. Kind of bit a bit of a smile on his face afterwards. Like I almost I almost got you guys. Off the net there, and now here's Eslinga. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's truly playing at another level. That's a straight OT. That's a straight OT, and that's exactly what the Alberta bench is saying right now just, just makes it look so effortless too the way he's able to get up with that length and find the back line Driverow pops it in nicely handled there by Lozier outside now to Minvin tipped over tracked down by Driverow Espedito outside Heslinga off the net nicely handled by Lozier in the back now right side Suasi shut down and Billy Johnson is there and that's a three point lead early here for Alberta and they can taste it. We saw in the first two sets here today the Laval middles really take control and in these last two we've seen the flip-flop where the Alberta middles have kind of settled in and come on strong here blocking and offensively. Yeah. 
It's a big sigh of relief there as Driver will serve is into the net. Put in there by Minville, handled off the net by Edwards. And now Jacob Sargent, oh my goodness. This, the speed they come with out of the back row is just hard to match. You have your middle blocker going up with the quick in front of them and it's hard to get down and back up again if to get hands on that back row of swing. That's like a one and a half tempo, right? Usually a pipe ball is like a second tempo. That's like a, a tempo and a half. Goodness gracious, right off the middle shoulder. Now Heslinga, much better serves here. His past two have been good. Now outside to lose. Yeah, and he shut down Billy Johnson with the mean mug coming off the net too. A little bit of a Conor McGregor swag walk there from Johnson as he gets a big stuff walk on the left side. Love to see the attitude there by Billy Johnson. And you know Luzi is a heavy swinger. He was lighting him up earlier in this match. That one's got to feel good as Hislinga takes a little bit off of that one. Now right side to Trussi. He goes off the block but handled by Hislinga. Now outside. Sergeant, he's shut down. That Z is right there to close the door. Laval pulls in a little bit closer. 7-4, but that's a big momentum play. 100%. That's got to feel good if you're the Laval team. You've got one of uh, Alberta's big left side swinging away, and you're able to get the stuff block on him. And Jonathan Adzi and Jonathan Zuhal for the right in the middle have been real good in the first two sets, but that the momentum has really changed the Alberta side since then, so it's like to see them with a bit of an answer. Now that's Doug in the back row. Here's Nozi again, three, hand, three sets of hands in front of him. That's stopped. Now the pipe. Oh, my goodness, the speed once again. He's running that on a first tempo. Got to give a big shout out to the Alberta libero today too. Merrick Edwards has done a great job both service receive and defensively picking up balls, giving his center the chance to run this potent offense that they have. Yeah. Hasn't made any big plays yet, but hasn't really been in any situations too either. But hasn't hurt them at all. So here we have Johnson now going at Belgian That's nicely passed up. Outside now, Luis Yi. Cross court, bread and butter. There is Lozier. We've seen him kind of go quiet over the last little stretch, but that, like you said, is bread and butter. That big, hard cross-court swing is able to find the court and score the point for Laval. We have Chouassi coming to the front row now for Laval as St. Aubin into the net. What we need right now, Laval needs some sort of type of like stealing momentum. They need another big block followed by a big serve. They need to they need to go on a bit of a run. That's right. Escudito. Out of port to put BC. Right side to Luz Yi. And a net violation. Called on the Golden Bears. I wanted to see them play that ball through. but Yeah, tough break. You had Alberta going in pursuit of that ball. It looked like they were going to get to it. You never know. They're, they're so good out of system to see what they would have done with that play. Lozier now back to serve, and he's got to manufacture something here. Good serve there by Lozier, Alberta, out of system. Oh, that's real high, but inbounds on Laval's side. Now Lozier out of the pipe. And there we go, that's one back from Laval. We haven't seen them run Lozier too much out of the back row today, but again, it just no. spreads their offense and allows them to get one of their best offensive pieces involved, even when he's not in the front row. Min Minville is not an offensive option. We haven't really seen him be one all day. So they really need to start lighting up Lozier out of the, out of the back row. Especially if you need to make Lozier the focal point of your offense to allow that spacing for Chuesi on the right side. Now 9-7. Laval not going away in this one. The first few sports. Men's volleyball quarterfinal of the day and that's an ace. Lozier. Alberta's bench trying to say that one was out, but we're right here. That one looked right on the line to me. Yeah, just clipped the end. Big, big serve by Lozier. It cuts this lead down to one here in this fourth set. Lozier out of Ottawa. And the Cesar de Limoli. That's going to be take a little bit of heat off it. Outside to Sargent, and no one is home. 
I know he's managing that toss, but if, if you're Lozier, you need to keep the pressure on. You need to keep going at Alberta. You need to knock them off their kill during service. Yeah, especially with that big spin that he has. Nicely handled there by Lozier now. Oh, off, of off the net and out of bounds by Jamal. Tough break there for Laval. It was a good run of the middle. He had him just clipped the top of the tape and took a bounce not in their favor. 11-8 here for Alberta. Things are getting a little dicey if you're a fan of the Real. Jacob Sargent just tossed that one a little too far ahead of himself. if Alberta can side out here. Two-point lead in this fourth set. Nicely handled there by Edwards. And they're just going to top it up to Graydon Wee, but Jonathan Z shuts the door. And we're seeing these Laval middles come back to life here. They kind of Disappeared for a short period of time in the second set and early in this, or the third set, sorry, and early in this fourth, but Adi has come on strong. Couple big blocks in this fourth set. Laval crawling their way back into this one. With Jiva back at the baseline. They've pulled within one, and that one is. That's a, that's a tough break there for Laval. Like we've talked about errors today, but timely errors too, right? You have momentum going your way. Big play by Adi to get the middle block, and Put one into the net. I, I won't translate what Gino Brusso said there, but uh, let me tell you, it wasn't it wasn't very nice. Reed back to serve. Belgian, oh, I would have liked to see him take that one. Chouassi, oh, there we go. Challenge that block, young man. What a swing, way to get them out of trouble. It's been a while since we've seen him really take a good swing at the ball, so it's nice to see him get himself back in the offense here in this fourth. Wesley now back at the baseline. With the floater easily handled. Heslinga! Just doing what Heslinga does. Big, big at the left side. I mean, it's not something that like I think we need to talk about too much now because we've been talking about it all afternoon. But this, this dude plays on another level. Slagero pops that one in off the net pass there by Lugier. Outside here, Minville. And he shut down. And the detail right now and the rhythm on Alberta's block is absolute perfection. They're nice and tight there together, up at the same time, pressing nowhere to go there for Menville. And 14-11 right now for Alberta. They can, they can taste it. Yeah, forcing Laval to take their first time out here in this fourth set. Three-point lead. And again, we're seeing Alberta just kind of play patient in a way, like letting the game come to them, knowing where their big offensive pieces are, and doing a great job defensively with their block. Seeing some replays right now. On the screen, we just saw that mean bug of Billy Johnson earlier. Rosie out of the back row. It has been a fantastic game so far, and I would like to see Laval battle back. There you see that block by Adi. If Laval, we've seen them. They, they've crawled out of the bigger hole just in this set alone of three points. Let's see if they can find a way. They've done it consistently today yep. of kind of settling themselves in, taking a deep breath, and just playing their game, right? My, my wonder is, is, if, is this timeout an emotional one or a tactical one for Neva, right? Is this just a raw, raw timeout, which at this point of the game is, is, is needed, right? At a certain point, there's only so much information you can take in and only so many things that you can change, right? And they just need to get themselves going. If they can find that little bit of momentum, generate some of it, manufacture it, that I could get themselves back into this game as Driver gets us into play. Outside now to Mainville, just tipped over, handled by Johnson. Dryborough, outside Heslinga, he slowed down, but no, just out of bounds. Great eye there by Merrick Edwards to watch that one fall just off the sideline. Yeah, great job again by the Alberto Libero. We haven't talked about him a whole lot because he's he's not doing anything out of this world, but he's just steady, eddy, consistent with his passes, getting that ball to his setter so that they can run this offense. 
Outside to Trussie, no one's home. Heslinga made it over there, got a hand on it, but it falls out of bounds. Linga. Oh, Tuasi was there. Yeah, we talked about Laval, maybe that timeout was strategic, but they're in the right places, they're doing the right things. Unfortunately, not able to convert that dig on the Heslinga swing, but good block up to get hands on it and slow it down and see if Laval can dig their way out of this four-point hole. That's a tough one as a coach, right? You can drop all the X's and O's, but you can't go out there and execute. Heslinga into the net. 16-13, so... Navad is sticking around here. I'm not sure what that was. That just fell on the court, but we got it taken care of. Z now back to serve for Navad. That low float serves caused Alberta some troubles, just like this all day. And now it's Heslinga out of the back row, chopped over. Z could have done a little bit better on that. Now Tuasi, C ball, it's kept alive, but that's out of bounds. Point Alberta. Again, we're seeing Billy Johnson in the middle with the big block. You see the excitement on his face, the big celebration into the bench, trying to kind of will the momentum back onto Alberta's side here. Brock Davida trying to say there that he got hit in the face off that ball, or Billy Johnson did, that he's looking for a bit of a timeout, but none given there as the serve had already been whistled in. Luis Yez is going to dump that one over. Handled by Weed. Dryborough, pipe, Heslinga. Yeah. That's, that's what, what a shot. The ability he has to manipulate his body and arm in two different directions to come up with a shot like that is second to none here today. It's, it's one thing to watch a player like Heslinga on a stream, you know, on a broadcast. It's a completely different thing to watch him in the game. Right, you know, he's, he's a player that, other than last year's national championship, I haven't really got the chance to watch play live and in person much. And he wasn't good at last year's national. This, so far today, he has been absolutely unreal. I think we're going to get a bit of a replay. Oh, no, we got a replay of a miss serve. Okay. That has been the one area where he has trouble today is on the service line. And there you see that big block by Billy Johnson. Yeah. Able to close on the pin. Come back from timeout, Alberta. If they can't taste it, they can smell it at the very least. The burger is on the griddle. They lead 18-13 up 2-1. to one. And They're looking to book their ticket to tomorrow's semifinal. To take on the winner of McMaster and UBC that we're going to see in the next semifinal. Not too long. Of course, bit of a bit of an interesting schedule this year, Ben, uh, with a four-day schedule on the men's side. And that's to allow a bit less of a, a, of a conflict with women's volleyball. Uh, of course, the two championships going on at the same time. The women's tournament getting both gets going tomorrow. Yeah, Bass University also in Ontario. Is Billy Johnson about to get us going underway here again at Queens? Just floats that one over nicely, tracked down by Belgian Hall. outside. Lozier down the line, and he scores. Great job by Lozier, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside and is able to turn and put that ball down the line. And you know what, we've, we've seen him go cross-court, cross-court, cross-court. The Bears gave him line and he took it. Off the net here for Alberta, outside to Sargent. Oh, that was close, that was close, but out of bounds. And from 1813 to 18-15, things are starting to happen a little bit on the side of Laval. Let's see if they can keep going. Yeah, Laval with a little bit of momentum here with, in this fourth set, down three. In the middle. <laughs> right. That's so ridiculous. And right back to Linga out of the back row. It, 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 this is a bad comparison, but it kind of feels like high school volleyball right now. Where you've got that one club kid on your team and you've got a good center who's just going to set him up. But that's kind of what it feels right now. Heslinga is just head and shoulders above everyone else. Espedito, what a serve. 
Whoa, fantastic run by Charles St. Aubain. Laval staying relevant, sticking with it. Man, we're seeing Laval run a little bit more balance to their offense right now in this fourth set. Again, in the middle where they were so successful in the first two. Good to see them balance it out. And this is a big stint here for Mosey at the baseline. Let's see what he can do. Oh, tough one. Tough one for that island Mosey because you know that's a guy that can get you some points and get you some steals. And, I mean, talking about a guy that can get you some steals and maybe really put the nail in the coffin in this one for Alberta, Jacob Sargent, who's hands down been their best server all day long. Another good big one, and that's going to be over. Driver, oh! Chalk another one up for the setter. You see the Alberta bench just loving that one. Yeah. Setter coming up big, the overpass, and him making them pay for it. Hey, they know that they got lunch after they win this one, so they're, they're getting ready for that. Now we're going to see a substitution here as Laval. Looking like they're starting to empty the bench a little bit. Coming in is Xavier Defossé. Hometown boy playing for his hometown school as Sergeant Serve finds his way into the net. 21 17. As I said, Ben, the last time Laval played a national, a national tournament in this very gym, they made it all the way to the finals, which doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. Whereas the Golden Bears, last time they played in a national finals, national championship in this gym, they lost in the quarterfinals to Queens. So, I'm not saying there's any curse, but, you know. Now one for one, potentially in quarterfinals at the arc. This driver sets it upside to Heslinga. He's going to roll it over and good dig there by oh, Saint Aubain trying to do a little too much there. Tough, tough play for the Laval setter. His left side was the person who dug the ball and was completely out of the play. He had no other options. Yeah. Just a tough break for Laval. Looks like Gifo C. His knee pad fell down. He hurt his knee a little bit on that one too. Now is Weed. Goes back to serve and see the hybrid spinner. Gotta love it. Suasi though, keeping that bat alive. Now he goes back to the baseline and if there's ever a time to unload a big spinner, gotta go for the spin to win now. What a swing. Oh, I, got for, I honestly, like, you could see it happening in slow motion in front of you. Like, Drybro is such a nice release on that ball, too, and the location is so good. Hesling is just, he's in such a good rhythm today. The entire Alberta offense has really figured it out of course, over the course of this match now. Outside now to Defossé, and that is going to find its way into the net, and just like that, then we have match point Golden Bears here in the first quarterfinal of the 2024 Men U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championship presented by Mikasa. Here Alberta, this is exactly where you want to be. You've got Dry Brown in the back row with three options in the front. Serving to the net. But still you've got five more points. Five more opportunities on the side out. We've got Hesslinger on the right side right now. Heslinga, pardon me. Wouldn't be surprised if we see them go to him. No, to Johnstone. Oh, that was down. That was def de definitely down there. And as soon as it was a good pass, it's like, oh, you're going to tee it up for Johnstone for sure. And that is it. Alberta takes the fourth set, 25-19. And they take the match, 3-1. 23-25, 25-23, 25-15, and 25-19 to win the first quarterfinal here of the U Sport Men's Volleyball National Championships. It was a good matchup we had here today. A bit of back and forth in the first two sets, and then Alberta really showed their muscle in these last two, taking advantage, just not really looking back uh, against this Laval team. Yeah, absolutely. Just a could tell it's a tough break for Laval not having the up all time, not having their one of their best players. They fought well for two sets, but after that, just the dominance of the Canada West Chancellor overtaking themselves. And we are 
We will be getting ready now for the player of the game announcements for either team. Of course, both of these teams will move on to play uh, another day. Alberta will play tomorrow, whereas Laval has an entire day off, and they will take on, I believe, the loser of UBC and McMaster. And maybe that's what Laval needs, an extra day off for Fontaine, maybe to get over the illness that he's suffering from right now to give them a, more of a chance in their consolation bracket. Stay tuned here for a little while until they announce the players of the game. And we will be right back. Hey guys, we're here with the player of the game for the Alberta Golden Bears, Isaac Heslinga. And Isaac, last year, not a great start to the national championship for you guys. All ultimately wasn't a great tournament. This year, completely different. You came out blazing. You guys got the 3-1 win. How does it feel right now? Feels good. A uh, little bit of a shaky start, first set, but I'm glad we, we made some adjustments and we stuck to it. And yeah, proud of the boys for that. How much of today was just settling into the match and finding your guys' rhythm and finding Golden Bears volleyball? Definitely a lot. Uh, Newer gym, so trying to feel that out. Uh, different different atmosphere. We had the Laval fans right behind us. We could hear that. But, no, it was fun. It was a fun experience. A little bit of battle earlier on. You saw Laval come back. You guys were up 14-9 in that first set. They come back to win the second. Or, sorry, the, the first. Is that kind of situation help you guys later on in the tournament? I think so. Uh, I think that's a testament to our, our emotional intelligence, as you would say it. But... Just finding a finding a way to stay level throughout the match. We're gonna have those up and ups and downs, but just figuring out a way to kind of levelize after those. Now looking forward to, to tomorrow. Uh, behind us, two teams warming up. One team you know really well from the Canada West. You play them in the semifinals. Another time, team beat you uh, in the bronze medal match last year, which I'm sure you don't forget. Uh, any preference on who you play tomorrow? No preference. We want 
We don't care. <laughs> We're ready for both. Awesome. Well, Isaac, congratulations on the fantastic player of the game. Fantastic on your U Sports Player of the uh, Year as well, and best luck in tomorrow's semifinal. Awesome. Thank awesome. You Thank you very much, guys. We'll be back shortly for match number two between UBC and McMaster here at the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball National Championships at Queen's University.